Alrighty, folks. Here we go. What's up, everyone? Hope you're all having a great Friday evening. Uh, my name is Von Yvonne, and I am going to be running... Um, you just saw Ghouls and Ghosts. We saw Arthur's story. Now we're gonna... Now we're gonna kind of flip it a little bit. We're gonna tell the story of... of one of the gargoyles in there, the red armor, as it's called. Uh, this is Gargoyles Quest 2. This is for the NES. I'm running the Japanese version because the tech scroll is faster. And uh, there's a lot of fast things in this game and a lot of really cool tech. And I am very excited to tell you all about it and get this going. So time starts when I press start on this screen. And that will be in 3, 2, 1, now. All right. So, little lore to start you out. So, the red gargoyle that you see here, his name is Firebrand. He's being told by this king here. He says, if you want to prove yourself as being the legendary Red Blaze, why don't you go on out to this training site and get started there? So that's what we're going to do. Um, this is going to kind of just teach about some of the kind of movement mechanics in this game, such as grabbing walls and jumping off of them, as well as flying and floating. Um, these are going to be the two main tenets of how we get around this game. There's a third one that's not, that wasn't like, I guess, like super intended for you to do, and that's damage boosting. There's gonna be a lot of damage boosting in this game to save time, move through stuff, um, and everything. All right, so we get out of the training site and this guy's like, okay, something's wrong. Um, you might wanna go out there and check it out. So we do. So this is the first real like stage of the game. Um, Another thing that we do a lot in this run where we can is manage um, manage lag. Those brown ghoul enemies that you saw popping out of the ground, there's going to be two on this rooftop here. The fact that he appeared early is, and that one too, is absolutely a blessing. Um, especially if the two of those things are on the screen together, the amount of lag that they cause is considerable. So we want to eliminate them as fast as possible. So a lot of this is just grabbing walls, jumping off of them, and everything. This is an interesting section here. We're going to kill that guy, jump up here early and kill him. Get him out of the way. Jump down, get him. Yeah, the lag. Okay, now we're going to do some real fun stuff here. Fly to the spike wall, hit it intentionally, fly up off of it, borrow that little corner there, which does not do damage to you, that allows us to skip, I don't know, about 15, 20 seconds of maneuvering under that part of the level otherwise, um, and that's good. All right, so here's our first boss of the game. Bosses in this game, for the most part, are going to be um, RNG nightmares. And this guy's already giving us a really crappy pattern. What we want him to do is stand on that platform right there and drop what I like to call the basketball, where it just bounces down and out of the way. All right, so he's dead. That's good. Now get out of here. All right, so you're going to go back to this good king here. Kings are going to be a theme in this game, too. This king is good. Some are bad. This one's good. And he's telling us about his... Oh, my goodness. There is a very mysterious darkness that is enveloping the land. It is threatening all of the monster world, but we don't know where it's coming from. You need to go find out where it is. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to die real quick. And so now we leave our hometown and venture out into the monster world. So this is kind of like a, this got kind of like an RPG feel to it here, where you've got this overworld and you go into towns and caves and castles and all that stuff. Um, but we're going to have to deal with these guys first, which is these, um, these ghouls. Oh, good. He popped out early. This one is going to take a sweet time. Okay. Fortunately, we don't see any more of those ghouls for the rest of the game. Uh, but there's plenty of other stuff we get to deal with. 
Um, there's going to be a few sections like this where you're just doing like a little kind of like bridge crossing thing or whatnot. We're going to use a technique here where I'm going to intentionally start and stop, you know, alternate starting and stopping my float um, to give myself a little more horizontal distance in certain Yo, Manic Ascendant, thank you very much for that raid. All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to pop into this hut right here, and we're going to talk to this guy, and he's going to give us a password. Now, the reason why we get the password is because that kind of sets that as a checkpoint. We're going to do two intentional game overs, and hopefully no unintentional game overs. And when we do, we will respawn at the last place where we obtained a password. Um, the item that we're going to get at the end of this little trek here needs to be used in that town. So as soon as we get the item, we'll game over as quickly as possible, get in there, use the item, and then move on. Yes, rule number one of Gargoyle's Quest 2 any percent speedrunning. Don't touch me. All right. We want this section to be very uneventful. We've got these kind of bridge enemies, or these little platform enemies here. Um, they can kind of do some funky stuff as far as like their hitboxes go. Um, so we don't want to see any shenanigans here. Oh my god, that's me dying on, because I killed my float too early. Okay, that's going to make this next section interesting. Um, okay, so that was eventful, that's bad. Alright. Not a big deal, though. Um, again, I needed to lose these lives anyway. Um, I would have rather lost them somewhere else. But, um, we'll make do. This is fine. This is completely fine. Yeah, not gonna kill my float there. Alright. Alright. So coming up here is the jungle. This is the first real gatekeeper of the run. There's a whole bunch of nasty RNG stuff that can avail itself, starting with these two platforms right here. Okay, good. He stopped to take a shot there, um, which gave me plenty of time to do what I need to do. All right, we're going to do a little, um, little time-saving trick here I like to call the jungle gym, where we're going to boost off this, climb up the face of this thing, and save maybe about like seven seconds or so that you would have to do otherwise going around that platform to the right and then hopping on it from the left. So, oh shoot, I meant to kill that thing. Again, that was just going to be for lag reduction, but whatever. Okay. Do a little stuttering there to make sure I grab that platform and don't miss it. Do a little boosting off of those spikes to climb faster than I'm floating here. You only float in this particular section of the game. That is a well-designed intentional death here because it gets you up to this platform faster and it refills your life, which is going to be really important for this next section. Borrow that little corner there. That is a very precise landing. We're going to do another one. It's kind of blind. And we do it right about there. Uh, just very gently touch the platform with uh, just like a toenail. To reset your uh, your wing power. All right, so this is Death Balloon. We do a nice little setup here where we just kind of sit here and just wail on him while he's right there. We can take two hits and he's dead. This boss can give you RNG, but fortunately, we kill him before he even gets a chance to drop any RNG shenanigans on us. All right. So this next section here is going to be walking, learning about lore, things like that. So not a whole lot going on here. So this is a fantastic opportunity to remind you that we here at Retro Gaming Live TV are raising funds for, um, for feeding the kids. There's a reason why we have named this marathon as such. If you use the donate command 
in chat. Uh, you will get uh, information on how you can make a donation. Um, there's also going to be some incentives for some games coming up, including the one that's right after this called One Must Fall 2097. I saw there was some character select uh, or, you know, a, a choose the character kind of donation incentive. Um, so please check that out. If there's uh, an interesting character that you would like to see for this next run, uh, please do make a donation, even if it's a small one. It can only be, you know, even if it's just a few bucks. Every little bit helps. You see, we've got a goal there of 3,000. We're almost halfway there. Um, and we've still got the whole weekend to go. So uh, we want to raise as much money as we can. Please do donate if you feel so inclined. All right. Coming up here is a section we like to call The Jump. Got to do those stutters to make sure you make it across this fire here. Otherwise, you will run out of wing power and die. And that's bad. We don't want to die here. Uh, we will want to die in a little bit. But not yet. Alright, so we obtained from that lady who was giving us this lore a new magic, which is essentially um, a new weapon that we, that we spit out. This is called the Buster Magic. This is significant because you can have two on the screen, it's stronger, and it breaks blocks, which we're about to do in just a second here. Whoops. Grab that wall too high, break those blocks, and we can come on through into this section here. The sand does push you in the direction it's moving, so we want to make sure that we are uh, floating over it when it's going away from where we want to go and standing in it when it's going to where we want it to go. Am I going to get fishied? I am going to get fishied. Very rude. All right. Sometimes they jump behind you. Sometimes they don't jump at all. So um, that was a rude fish. All right. Coming up soon is going to be an absolutely horrible RNG boss here, the Sand Frog. So you can create these little spores which prevent you from jumping, which is really bad. Although, when he jumps back and forth like this, that was actually a really good fat, a, a really good pattern. All right, good. So. Yeah, all you want him to do is just jump back and forth because you can hit him while he's doing that. He doesn't attack you. He moves very slowly. Great way to get in a bunch of hits. All right, so uh, Desert Palace done. We have obtained an item called the Gremlin Stick. Which is what we need to use in this town, which is why you saw me just walk right into that fire very intentionally. And now we're going to come into here into this king, um, who has been cast under a spell. But we're going to use the Gremlin Stick and break it. And he's going to be like, oh, hey, thanks. Let me hook you up with some stuff. And off we go. Yeah, anytime you hear that, da -da 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 -da, that means you usually... You're either getting an item or you're getting stronger in some way. All right, so good king rescued. We can now move to the west. Um, one of the things that he hooked up with there was another magic, um, and you're going to see me using it um, very soon. Whoops, hello. Let's talk to this guy. Um, you're going to see me using it very soon here. Uh, this is called the Tornado Magic. This is significant in that it shoots out these little tornadoes that don't go very far, but they create these little platforms that you can stand on. Um, and that's going to be incredibly useful for basically the rest of the game. So uh, we will use them quite a bit. But before we get a chance to really do that, we have to deal with um, what is normally a pretty difficult boss to deal with. But your boy Vani has devised some methods for dealing with him more easily than you would normally expect. All right, so this is an evil king. He's going to ask us a question after the third text box. We're going to mash B here to say no, even though you see that pointer to uh, pointing to hi or yes. Um, I have actually said no by virtue of pressing B. And there we go. So that was Malgor. Um, 
he can be really, really difficult to deal with. But fortunately, um, that went very smoothly. Now, that boss has no RNG at all, which is nice. All right, we're going to come in here. We're going to talk to this guy. He's like, hey, have you heard about this really cool thing? Well, let me show you. And we're going to get an extra segment of life here. This is strictly for marathon safety. Oh, jeez. Now I'm away. All right, now with Malgor down, we get to go into the mountain pass. Um, this... This place presents some interesting challenges. Um, especially with these little platform things and the bones and all the stuff. Uh, the, the, um... The tornado can be used as a weapon. You see me killing those flies as they come up to me. I'm gonna take an intentional boost that way. Use those platforms to fly all the way up. Oh, whoops. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to grab this heart. Hello. And not get hit there. Oh, oh my god. I can't believe I just did that. That sucks. Yeah, it, it looks like it's out on my side. All right. So coming up here are the Twin Guardians. These guys can be an RNG nightmare, too. But he was the homie there. I kind of want to focus on one if you can, because if you let them go on for long enough, they converge and do this kind of, like, tornado attack. This is not a good place for me to be in. Oh, God. I need to get... Okay. Please die, thank you. All right, good, good. All right. So Twin Guardian's down. Now, normally, um, I would take an intentional death as soon as I get in there before the fight even starts. And the reason being is that it helps us to set up for um, <clears throat> an intentional game over that we'll be doing in a few minutes. Okay, we're getting more stuff. Now we can head west here. The reason I didn't take the death there is, again, marathon safety. The next level that we're going to do here can present some issues. So we're going to keep those extra lives in our pocket just in case we need them. Um, what are you doing? Stay there. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, we just kind of put ourselves in that position right there. Locust Boy has no idea what to do, except just take a bunch of buster shots to the face. And it makes that boss pretty trivial. Little mini boss, if you will. Another little transitional platform here. Not a whole lot going on. This would be a great time to just take a minute, open up another browser window, and send in a donation if you can. Let's see if I get the good float here. Oh, I think I got it. Yeah, sweet. All right. I didn't have to readjust there. That's always nice. Okay. So into the mirror maze. Uh, this is a unique level in that there are multiple paths through it. There's a lot of dead ends and like places we can go, like items or, you know, things like that. But uh, we really just want to get to the end of this as quickly as possible. And we're going to use all kinds of tornadoes to do that. Throw that out. Let you catch that. Tornado up. Just all we're doing here is just tornadoes up. makes the getting through this all so much faster. Fall through the false floor here. Alright, now let's see if I can do this next section properly. The fact that I have a life to give emboldens me. Whoops, and I just totally goofed on that. Okay. Okay, we'll do that then. 
Oops. Okay. Oh, shoot. That's right. I have an extra. Okay. We'll just fly. Oh, my God. Okay. That's fine. Uh, that was really sloppy, but it's fine. All right. We're going to come here. Let's just take an intentional death now. Refill our life. Ah! Okay, he should be dead soon, though. Yeah, good. Alright, so that boss is actually really nice to me. It can do one of two things. It can either swoop back and forth, or it can turn into that kind of, like, purplish version of Firebrand that you saw there. Uh, and that boss is called the Doppelganger for that reason. Now, the thing that sucks about when he turns into the pink version of Firebrand is that anytime you hit the pink version of Firebrand, you take damage. It's almost like a reflection of yourself. Hence the mirror maze, all that good stuff. Um, so, uh, so when you, when he's in pink firebrand form, it's just a waste of time. There's literally nothing you can do. You're better off just sitting there and just waiting for him. All right. Um, we're going to talk to this guy right here. He's going to give us another password. Um, because basically all we need to do is do one of these little kind of transitional stages, talk to a couple of, um, talk to a couple people in the village on the other side, and then go right back to where we were. And we're going to do that quickly by way of a, whoops, uh, by way of an intentional game over. Again with the tornadoes, because it makes climbing everything faster. Oh, whoops. Ah, uh, that thing absorbed my... That was rude. Okay, that's fine. Alright, so... Gotta talk to... Uh, this is... Uh, this here... This is the only queen we're gonna see in the run. Um, we talk to the queen here, then we go talk to the king. Get the stuff that we need, and then we can move on. Alrighty. King now, he gives us the rest of the stuff we need. Alrighty. Again, if you uh, are able to make a donation, even if it's a small one, for what we're doing here, it would be greatly appreciated. If you have some donation incentives you'd like to hit up, um, you can do so. Like I said, there's some for the run that's coming up right after mine, which is going to be ending in... This run will be ending hopefully in the next about seven or so minutes. Seven, eight minutes. So if you want to donate anything for that uh, next run, one must fall. Um, you will want to do so soon. Normally, we would take just one death here. But because I kept one in the pocket for marathon safety, uh, we take two. Okay. Game over. Not a problem. Now we can come up here and talk to this king. Now that we've gotten all the stuff we need, he'll give us the item that will allow us passage to the east um, where we can get to the next... next kind of like dungeon of the game, if you will. All right. Most complicated menu in the game where I need to move down and right. All right, so here we are in Goza's Palace. We have another magic now. This is called the Claw. It's going to be kind of this blue and black orb thing that we shoot out here. What's unique about this is that when the Claw hits a vertical spike wall, it will create this kind of like little sticky place that um, Firebrand can grab and then jump off of it. And we will use this coming up here in the not terribly distant future. Perfect. And he's right here. See, it makes that little kind of sticky, uh, grabby point. Huh. 
Oops. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna clear out all six of them. How about that? Alright, fun damage boosty stuff here. That wants you to use the claw, but we say nay. We just go ahead and use our damage boost tricks because we're speedrunners and make that a lot faster. All right, so this is Goza. There's no RNG in this fight, but there also is very intense flashing. So please be warned if you have any photosensitivity issues. There we go. And that boss fight goes the same way every time, provided you position yourself on the left side of that top platform. Um, either damage boost or jump over that little red kind of ball thing that he uh, that he throws out and then just stand there and as long as the, now you can't mash when you're shooting against that boss uh, the the rhythm is very important because he kind of does have like iframes um, that obviously you can't see but um, but he does so you have to the rhythm there is very important all right, final stage of the game. Music here is awesome, too. So if we've got cat jams, rat jams, anything like that, this would be an appropriate time to drop those into chat. Take a little damage boost there. We take a lot of damage boosts in this level. Switch to our tornado, because this is going to be useful as always. Boost up here. Jump over that. And that. Perfect. Boost. Oh, whoops. Okay, that's fine. Kind of did that in a little goofy way. Get a nice little... Not only does that refill your life, but it gives you an extra segment, too. Right, you want to bait out these shots so you can jump by them without them hitting you. And... Oops. Hello. What am I doing? That's just what we wanted to see there. Back to the tornado. All right, this is a really cool damage boost combination I'm about to do here. Boost off... Oh, no. Oh, well, that's fine. I've got the extra life to do it. Boost off the top. Hit him. Boost off his shot. Jump up there. Use the iframes to walk across the spikes and put yourself into position. That saves a bunch of time. All right, and now we have our final magic. This is called the Dark Fire. We basically just use it on the final boss here, which is coming up. Uh, again, very intense flashing here, so please be warned. We're gonna set up, as you might guess, one more damage boost. We're gonna fly right in front of his face and then just let him have it. And there we go. Rager dead, again. There is no RNG there as long as you set it up that way every time. Oops, I forgot to press B there. Alright, now we can talk to this king. Everybody's happy. Yay, you figured out who was uh, bringing us all that evil darkness. Um, you've done it, Firebrand. You are the Red Blaze. Good boy. And as soon as I'm done talking, that's time. 27-24. I had an unintentional death and had to do an extra one, so that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So yeah, so there you go. So there is Gargoyle's Quest, any percent, for the NES. I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, other than uh, that error of, of dying in the, uh, uh, the, the platform phase, that was a pretty good run. So you love to see it. Yo, thank you everyone for the GGs. I do appreciate it. Alrighty, so coming up next, so you can see there we've got one must fall 2097, but that's going to actually, um, we got a couple back to, we've got a block of blocks here, and it's not necessarily the games, but it's the runners. We've got my buddy David TKI, he is going to be running the next four games here, and then after that, he's going to toss it on over to fellow RGL staff member uh, Yelsrake, and he is going to be running five games in a row. So, uh, if you like yourself some blocks, if you like yourself some MS-DOS games, that's what that's what uh, we've got um, coming up here with, with David. 
then um, you're definitely going to want to stick around. So um, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go ahead and cut to a transition screen here, put on some cool music, and uh, we're going to do a restream swap. So please be patient. Uh, we'll get going uh, with a new one here in just a second. And uh, yeah, be sure to give David a lot of love when he comes on here. He is definitely a, uh, a, a valued member of the community. So uh, again, thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope to see you all around all weekend. Um, and until I do see you again, take care, everyone. <laughs>